Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to B2B Breakfast to Business, where we talk shop, we talk life, and we talk advocacy, and we talk real. Today, we talk about AI. Yes, AI. AI is here on the B2B stage because why not? It is becoming or has actually really become a part of our work our learnings and our life experiences and it is so important to have a safe and creative space to talk about AI and how it affects what we do and who we do it for. You know, we know that AI is here and it's here to stay, to learn, to evolve and to enable and there are a multitude of discussions, threads, comments and conferences on the topic as people around the world try to make sense, understand, and prepare for the age of AI. And big questions really on market readiness, job securities, ethical use and practices, and many, many, many more have taken up headlines the past year or so. And of course, in our curious world here in Team Asia, we've been exploring how we can embrace AI and see how it can help boost productivity, aid in the creative um, process, and challenge our innovative thinking. So in this episode, what we want to do is to tackle the journey of AI discovery and the human um, plus tech mindset with none other than very curious, very innovative, and very awesome guests um, who are, in fact, our creative our digital creative directors of Team Asia, all of whom, by the way, have been B2B guests in the past. And we are welcoming them home to the B2B stage today. I'd like to introduce everybody to, first and foremost, Shumanalo, our executive creative director. Next up, we have Jeff Enriquez, our director for tech capabilities and data privacy. And James Chong, our director for digital strategies. Hello, Shu, Jeff, and James. Welcome back to the B2B stage. How are you doing? I'll start off first with Shu. Good morning, everyone. I'm doing great. It's a, it's a great day today. It, it's a great discussion to have as well. I know. I'm really looking forward to the discovery session. Next up, Jeff, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm looking forward to our discussion and uh, hopefully we can contribute some of our knowledge to you guys. Great. Thank you so much, Jeff. And of course, James, how's it going today? Great. Um, so um, really, really a great topic for us today, especially within our line of work. So yeah, excited about this. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm very excited that we have Shu, Jeff, and James on the podcast to discuss actually our own AI discovery. I know that there's so many things out there, so many topics that we can dig into, but we felt that it was necessary for us to talk first and foremost about AI discovery. And our AI discovery, I mean, it's been there, you know, we've been talking about it, but it really went full throttle when this amazing team actually created a presentation on Gen AI as part of a masterclass on the impact of AI in the learning and young professional journey, which was organized by GAIN, the Government Academy and Industry Network. So I want to talk about that first because technically it was our big launch pad um, and our digital creative directors were actually very involved in creating this presentation and knowledge sharing with GAIN. So I'd like to check in first, Shu and James, what did you talk about and what were the main highlights or maybe key takeaways of that session? I'll start off first maybe with uh, Shu. So yeah, so my part of uh, the conversation was really about the impact of chat GPT and other generative AI in education. So I cut it up in two parts. Uh, there was an impact on students, how they're already using it today as we speak in the past year as well, on doing homework, on on um, uh, helping them out uh, with with their studies, um, and also the impact on teachers uh, and um, the professionals in the academe as well, how they're coping with it, how they're seeing this to impact their, their teaching styles, uh, their fears, their fears on what their students are doing. So we also discussed um, how how the relationship within the student uh, between the student body and that and the teachers are getting affected by the introduction of this interesting tool. So the impact, um, uh, the response to the presentation essentially, uh, there's one thing that like, resonated really well with 
the group in that we created a couple of videos on the history of ChatGPT. And one of the videos was actually produced, scripted, written and directed by ChatGPT itself. So it was like developed by ChatGPT and another um, editing um, AI. And then we had a second video of the same topic, the history of ChatGPT, which was done by our creative team. And we showed uh, the the viewers the difference between output that is created by AI and output that is created by uh, by a producer, a human producer, and a human right and a writer. So that was one of the the biggest eye openers. But there was also an eye opener for me, um, having been uh, having researched on how it affects students. I realized that it was not much different from from my job uh, and what we do uh, in the office. Is that there's no difference between its impact on teachers and students, as there is an impact on me as an executive creative director and my team, and how we navigate um we navigate like what we do using this uh, very scary sometimes very confusing but actually very helpful tool once we get to know about it so that's really essentially like what we all learned uh from this process that's awesome thank you so much Shu, for sharing that james how about you what were the main key takeaways so I, I did take home from what she was talking about when it comes to impact. And um, uh, we drove home the idea of creative thinking, critical thought, right? Um, we, we needed to establish that we don't really need to be scared of AI because AI, at the end of the day, is really just a tool for us to, for us to use, right? And um, we were able to bring it home to how Timesha, um sort of integrated AI into our services and how we do things. We were able to talk about um, a certain process um, of, of how we conceptualize, develop, execute, and measure um, our campaigns and our, our, our projects. And um, we were able to talk about how AI has been integrated into several steps by different um, lines of um, expertise or different expertise, right? Or different, different, different groups of people with different expertise, right? And how AI has been used in 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 the process of 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 executing a campaign. So what really drove home the idea was that uh, regardless of whether um, uh, we were what kind of AI tool we were using, the fact remains that it is humans that are using these tools and um, for us to be able to, to be successful with it, we need to employ critical thinking, creative thought, regardless of what kinds of, what kind of tools that we're using. Right? So um, that's sort of what the secret sauce is. And I think that's what created um, some impact among um, our audiences that day. Great. Thank you so much, James. I love that, the creative thinking versus critical thought. Um, and I think it's important for everybody to know and to remember that it is humans that are driving these tools as well. And I think that that's a lot of the where the fear comes in, right? Of of the age of AI and AI taking over the world. We also have to look into how the humans are part of that process as well. I'm curious, you know, Jeff um, actually was also a proponent of this um, presentation. So Jeff, I, I, I would like to know from your end, how was the experience of actually digging into AI and its impact on the work for this particular presentation and talk. I work in the background for James and Anxious presentation. Uh, while doing the, um, especially like uh, we concentrated on the process where we integrate here, uh, where we integrate uh, AI to our process. Actually, uh, I, uh, the highlights that I would like to pinpoint is that our organization. Mostly our line of business people are already trying AI. Uh, we've been successfully um, uh, interested in culture and, 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 and culture thing that um, our people are very open. They're not fighting actually in using these uh, AI tools. But um, uh, when we document all the processes and how AI helped it, 
uh, one thing that I would like to pinpoint is how we still uh, success successfully integrate human and 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 AI as a, as a tool. We preserve the creativity and and the decision making um, process of our uh, our approach. No, uh, if I can mention circle here, so uh, that is something uh, that I'm proud of and 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 very exciting actually that our people are embracing yeah, these tools. Great, thank you so much for sharing, Jeff. Jeff actually already um uh took note or or spoke about actually our creative process, which we lovingly call circle, right? And and it's a great segue actually into the next portion of our podcast where we really want to talk about embracing AI using what we know, which is um our our creative process, right? How Team Asia does the work, you know, as an integrated marketing agency, creativity is really at the core of what we do, and we have our own creative process. And so it's CIRCLE, it's an acronym actually for first we need to tackle the challenge, and then we go into inciting, right? Being able to really look into the insight that will drive letter R, the response to the challenge posed by our clients. And we now talk about our core message. You know, what is that big idea? What is that big positioning statement that we want to drive our executions on? And then we have L that stands for legs, our execution points. And of course, letter E um, is actually twofold. It's the experience that we want to push out there coming from, you know, our executions. And at the same time, also the end result. You know, KPIs are very important in our industry as well. So... Shu, James, and Jeff used our creative process circle in actually our AI discovery, right? To be able to see what impact AI has on what we do. And so what I want to talk about now is challenge versus the AI response. So we now know that AI is here, but I'm curious to know, Shu, Jeff, and James, how do we embrace AI in the workplace and, you know, for the purposes of this podcast, let's just use Team Asia as, as an example, right? It really will depend on your organization and the like, but it would be good to, to share our journey. So maybe, Shu, I'd like to start off with you since, of course, you are driving that, that creative process that we have. So how do we embrace it through the creative process? One of the biggest issues that come with the use of AI is that a lot of people think that this becomes the creator of the content, right? This mm -hmm. becomes the answer to the assignment this becomes the social media post that people see this becomes the article uh, but the thing is if you look at the way ai works what it is best at is to actually come up with formats or outlines of how a certain topic can be discussed so that's actually an interesting tool for many writers who are developing content and that they can use this to organize their thoughts and then add their own take on the subject because the human point of view is what makes the piece authentic. It's what actually makes it very resonant to a target audience. And it makes it centered. It makes it feel like it comes from the Philippines and it didn't come from some article that came from San Diego somewhere. Another thing is that um, AI content or the data that you get, the facts that you get, from ChatGPT. It's notoriously bad facts. So it's very, very important for us to still have that instinct to immediately fact check, uh, to find out exactly whether this is the type of information that is important, number one, important to the target market. Is it actually correct? Um, are your facts uh, on solid ground. So these are the things that I think are very important in the process. Again, at the end of the day, AI only helps us curate the information. At, when it comes to the actual output, we are creative people. How you put it together is an act of editing, is an act of making decisions on what goes in and what stays out. It's an act of simplifying. It's an, an act of of making judgmental choices of what is important. AI cannot do that for you. This is already an act of judgment. It is about art direction. It is about being a creative director. It's about being the writer that 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 most of our, our people want to be. They don't want to just 
copy the work. They're copywriters, not because they're copying content. No, they 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 want like a stake, um, and a point of view on what they write. So this is really what what AI is to us. It is a tool we're not scared of because it makes our work more efficient. Um, it helps us do the dirty work uh, of, of, of organizing our thoughts. It can also do some of the, the, the checking of the grammar and stuff like that. Um, but at the end of the day, the point of view is ours. So we're not scared of tools. I love tools. I love like Photoshop. I love having all of these idea generation tools. And this is just another one that we can mine and we can take advantage of. Sure, I love that. I, I just really have to highlight what you shared. We are not afraid of tools. If we see AI as a tool, right, that can help us, that can help us curate, right, that can help us be more efficient, then we see it very differently, right? Then, you know, this, this otherworldly, you know, entity that, you know, we have heard AI to be as well. So there is that change um, of, of POV if we see that it is a tool. Speaking of tools, I know James is also, a, you know, is into tools and he loves being able to also look into how different tools, right? And investments we make, tech that we, that we bring into the process will really help elevate our work and our output. So James, I'm, I'm curious also, um, given our process, our creative process, and also the work that we do for our clients, how does it become a tool and a partner in maybe brainstorms, ex execution, and the like? Yeah, please go ahead. Well, I, I, I always thought this particular, something like, an, something like something of an adage, right? That, you know, a painter would be able to create like a masterpiece without, you know, being an expert of the the palette and the paintbrush and how to you know uh, um, have a relationship with the tools and how how he expertly does um, the work using all of his tools right so um at the end of the day um, team asia approaches ai with um with with the mindset that it it is to be used side by side with the discernment and the judgment that only humans can make. At the end of the day, it's a it's, it's a human's work. The creative industry is 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 a work of a, of a human person with its own discernment and judgment and creativity and whatnot. So the, the the human perspective is 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 probably something that AI won't probably or would take decades for it to learn and understand. Um, because you know, at the, at the other side of it, would you know all of these science fiction stories that would you know talk about AI and robots, you know, um, having some semblance of emotion, right? And you would have there. There was this robotics test. I don't know. If, I, I don't remember the name, but it, it was I think Asimov who, who talked about it. That it is still a robot if it cannot understand or discern feelings, right? So there's so there's that. I mean, at the end of the day, the creative industry is. It's a human work with it with all of its emotions and and and, and feelings and and perspectives and judgment and um yeah so that's how we approach uh ai and our usage of ai as a tool and as jeff and you may have mentioned earlier the circle method right so um the circle method is essentially a method that takes us from the planning to the execution and measurement of the campaign. Um, and from the planning, I mean, as you mentioned earlier on, it helps us AI. Uh, there are a lot of AI tools that would help us, um, you know, produce a lot of the first set of ideas and help us organize all of the ideas that we could possibly come up with and help us identify some of the key insights that would be common among all of those ideas and help us process at some to some degree, right? While we as humans make decisions as to what will be carried over from the ideation process, so from, from the processing to the actual ideation that we will take into uh, consideration or consider into you know, uh, creating some of the more creative concepts that will be applied into the execution of the campaign. Um, so, I mean, a lot of it is um, uh, part of being able to organize, Q, uh, organize, uh, sift through um, uh, 
to some degree be able to process a lot of the ideas because during brainstorms, we would be able to come up with lots of ideas and you know it, it would be it would be more efficient if we, if, if we had a smarter tool to help us sift through and create insights out of all of the ideas that are presented on the table. Um, we were able, we, we are, you know, capable of um, being able to do it on our own, even before the introduction of AI, but it just makes the work a lot easier um, from the planning to the execution, um, uh, even the, the quality control of the content, you know, uh, plagiarism checks, um, grammar checking, and, you know, there are some tools that would help us if, for example, would this article rank better in SEO or search engines? So those types of tools that allow us to execute better. And, you know, for the longest time, Meta and Google AdWords would have AI already integrated in it, and it's called okay. machine learning, right? So all of these machine, lear machine learning technologies have been there since a few years ago and it's just now that it's getting more ground and getting more attention because i read in this one article that ai became more accessible and more democratized so mm. that's why we're talking about it that's why it's becoming more of a big deal but it has been there and we've that's been able to use it since since meta and face and google you know made their tools available for us marketers so i guess i'd like to and there on how we have used it from planning to execution and to measurement of our companies. Thanks, James. Two things that I kept on hearing as you were sharing. Number one is the biggest thing that we need really as humans is the decision making, right? It's like they're there. AI is a tool. They're able to sift through a lot of the things that we need to get done. It um uh, it helps us organize. Shu mentioned earlier, I love the prompt curate, right? It helps us curate um and the like. But ultimately, humans decide how to use the information also, whether to use it or not, or even not to use it, right? So it's decision making. So um, check mark, right? In terms of the people who, you know, will be seeking jobs of the future, decision making skills is very important. The second thing that was really coming at me was AI as a tool is really helping us actually free up more time for us to do the quality work. Right? Like, like to your point, James, we can do it the money, eh? you know, really, we can do it. Um, there are ways that we can go through. We've been doing it, right? The research, organizing our thoughts, organizing the data and stuff. But then AI is, has come to actually make the process shorter able to get more data, right? So that it frees us up for the thinking, the thinking and the feeling part of, of, of our work. And I love that you branded the creative industry as really human work, right? So thanks so much, um, James, for that. I'd like to go now to Jeff um, uh, and, and check in with, with you, Jeff. How do we embrace AI instead of fighting it? And you know this because we are, you know, in several different conferences and discussion points. We see everything in, in you know, online, you know, big, big discussions that are really polarizing also. So what's your, what are your tips? How do we embrace it instead of fight it and why? Yeah, if my, if I may cite example, what we did in Team Asia um, as early as last year, late last year when ChatGPT uh, was released in the market, we already start thinking in the mancom level management level that how do we em embrace how do we use that how how can we use it on, on on our advantage well um at the start of the year we communicate with our people first that we will start small in terms of of uh, trying and using these ai tools specifically the gpt uh, model now um because i agree with james that we have been using we've been using ai before machine learning on our existing um, tools, like for example, on our on our uh, Meta, um, uh, our Google Ads, um, we we've been using that. But since the release of ChatGPT, everyone is not surprised on how we can easily uh, use it. But just uh, going back to the question, um, um, what we did is we start small, communicate with the people on how uh, how we how we will use and how we will treat this AI. 
uh, we we communicated properly that it's just a tool for now, and it will not going to replace your job. That's first. We need to set it uh firmly and and communicate with our people. Then uh, then then third, what we did is we 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 let our people um freely use AI, but with accountability. Uh, meaning um meaning that uh, they may still use AI. They can still they they can try and experiment AI on a small scale. But they are also account accountability on the output and promote transparency on in terms of their output. Um. Yeah. And uh, and lastly, we we it's okay to at least uh, it's very important that we release policy to make sure um everyone in the organization is in the same page and what uh on how we can use properly and how we can adopt this AI. Absolutely. Because there, because Go ahead. there will be. There will be still a lot of changes. More AI tools will be coming in the market. Um, actually, on average, I think there's a five uh, apps uh, application that was released every that is releasing every every day. So, um, but uh, um, yeah, having a policy will help everyone understand and um, better adapt these tools and making everyone the same page. Thank you so much, Jeff. It's so important to really communicate, right? What what AI or what you how AI will actually impact their work, how it will be, how it will be used, why it will be used, and that it will not replace actually um the, the people also that we have. And I think that, that that was super important with what you shared. And and I just really want to highlight one of the things that you mentioned, which was accountability and transparency in the name also of discovery and exploration. Because we really know, we won't know how to use AI and how it will really impact us if we also don't take the time to discover and experiment, right? But I loved what you said. We need to also be responsible about it, that we have to have accountability also in the usage of the tools, right? I'm going to use shoes term, that it is a tool, right? So how we use also tools, we're accountable for all of the tools that we also use. Jeff, you also shared the big word, I think that everybody is waiting for, which is policy. <laughs> so everybody, it's because, you know, AI is something that is being questioned, should it be regulated and all that? And, and how would we use it? But it's important to have policies. But you shared also an excellent point that it's continuously evolving, right? AI is continuously evolving. So how can we even come up with a policy? I'd like to, to start off first with James. Like, you know, James, you were talking about the tools and also, you you made mention already about the creative industry. I'll start with you first, and then I'll go around the room as well on this particular question. How do we create policy surrounding AI when it's continuously evolving anyway, right? So, very curious, because that could be the, the, the question of our listeners as well. Go ahead, James. Well, there was this uh, well, I, there was this discussion that Jeff and Shu and I had during the the gain presentation, at least before the gain presentation, where we talked about a particular case about intellectual property and um, whether AI can own intellectual property. And I think I think the judgment there was it cannot because it's actually not like a like a like a persona or, or like an identity right so it now it now opens up the 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 question of whether yes it's it was an ai tool that created an output or 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 or, or a creation right so if if um does that creator is is that creator able to 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 own and you know current current conversations would say no because it's it's not a actual human being but um, would there be like um, you know conversations moving forward where in that con that that the, the angle would change or would there be like developments in the technology that would you know tilt the scales into a different way? So I guess um, creating a policy and being able to identify whether entities can own IP or not is of crucial. Uh, it's, it's, it's a crucial conversation to probably have and um, would probably lead to like legislation or a policy um, because it protects the um, it protects the interests of people who create right um, it's it's important for us because um, 
at the end of the day, uh, similar to the angle that we kept on talking about this, that humans are the ones who's still creating, it's just AI that are the tools that we use. So, for example, would be a word Photoshop with an ownership of a particular intellectual property. Of course not, right? Because it's 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 not how it goes. But I guess AI would have like a different set of faculties that allow it to create certain outputs by itself. So that's a worthy conversation to have. And it's just it's it's just necessary for us to be able to get into a position wherein we protect the creative industries and people and the people that work in it. Um, and hopefully, I, and I guess hopefully, that's where potential legislation would go to protect the humans and consider and, and have a position similar to what we did in the AI policy of Indonesia, is that consider AI as tools and not to replace mm -hmm. people in our faculties to create. Absolutely. And on that note, I just want to segue right away to Shu. Shu, as a creator yourself, right? And driving really also our, our creative business. How does this work out? Like, what, what kind of policies should we even create when AI is continuously evolving? I, I, I'm usually less concerned about policies, but it's very, very important also to make definitions of roles that we have. Um, within the structure, like for example, quality control, like understanding what is produced by our people and what is presented to the client. Sometimes like when you start talking about ownership, it's very, very tricky because what if there is content that is presented to client and it's approved and it's 50% AI structured, let's say, even if a lot of the anecdotes are from a human point of view. Um, do we charge for it? How do we charge for it? Do we charge for the support of AI? For example, is that a tool that we charge for? Or is that a tool that makes the charging or the, the, the cost structure different? I mean, those are things that along the way, um, policy will need to constantly evolve as well. This intellectual property rights, like we, we had this discussion with James before. Um, it was actually a sculpture that was developed by an AI that had no human intervention, which is why they were saying that it was purely AI developed. Um, so that was a tricky thing. Of course, it did not like make it through um, uh, it's getting trademarked. Uh, but you know, as it becomes more ubiquitous, the policy will start moving or it, it, it will start changing. And again, it will boil down to how we use this or how we wash our hands of the responsibility of creation. Uh, it, it's really up to us to make that call, wh wh whether we just make a judgment of how to write something or what we put into writing is to also make a call on what is my input in this. Uh, and, and a lot of people who are fearful will continue to be fearful. A lot of people who will be confident will continue to be confident. A lot of people who are always creative will just use it as one of its, uh, that their tools in the arsenal. So policy can move, um, but it's really at the end of the day about how you feel about yourself and your role, how you how how you do quality assurance, how you make sure that the work that you present is authentic and and yours, um, and that's integrity. Those things, you know, I think a lot of like like stuff that you cannot put into policy, like integrity. Uh, creativity, perspective, and a lot of ethics. Uh, a lot of those things you can write some rules down, but it it's going to be very difficult to police, and we can't. We can't. It can't be adversarial all the time. So yeah, it's a very tricky, tricky area. Uh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. And to your point, sure, right? It's a human call. Eh? Integrity, creativity, you know, authenticity. That's a human call. Um, and you know, we can write 
as many things that we can in policy, but at the end of the day, it's really also our take on the matter. Um, it's our ethics, right? And that is a human thing. So going back earlier, it's like it's the feelings and the emotions of it all, right? So thanks so much, Shu, for for sharing that. I'd like to call back in Je Jeff, um, because Jeff authored, <laughs> um, uh, you know, our, our first foray right into our our own AI policy, knowing that it will continuously evolve. And in fact, one of the caveats that Jeff has is, "Hey team, this is our AI policy, but this will evolve and evolve, and we don't yeah. even want to put a timeline, right, Jeff, because." It can evolve, you know, within a matter of weeks or even months or later on, right? So, Jeff, um, given, you know, what you've heard today and also our own experience, um, for folks also who are looking at, okay, how do we actually look into policy shaping? What are the things or the elements that we need to consider in crafting um, these policies? Actually, I would like to highlight uh, six or uh, six elements. You can have more. But these six um, elements uh, is my recommendation. It should be on the policy. Or when you create a policy, you need to consider. Uh, first is uh, flexibility, of course. Their policies should be uh, flexible, ready to adapt on any changes um, uh, that will be happening, will happen. Uh, AI landscape is still very, uh, it will still change uh, and, and more change will happen in the next few uh, days and months no, and even years. Next is it should be uh, simple um, because um, it, it, the policy should communicate easily. Um, avoid using technical jargons uh, like that. Uh, everyone in your organization should understand the policy. So making it simple and easy to understand is very important. Uh, third is, of course, fairness. Uh, fairness. Um, everyone should, uh, AI should be accessible by all. Uh -huh. um, it should be written on your policy. And of course, um, Make sure it doesn't it doesn't favor any group of of people or or, or or department on your organization. Make sure it's a it's accessible for everyone. Uh, and then safety, of course. If everyone has uh, access to the AI tools, it should be safe. Uh, make sure everyone that uh, every uh, no one in your organization use it to promote these informations um, on purpose or accidentally. Uh, so um, QA will will be also very important on this element. Um, of course, collaboration and accountability. Uh, your policy should really be uh, involving a lot of stakeholders in your organization, making sure you listen to what they are also saying and, and their feedback. Um, also do a regular check-in since uh, AI is still changing. Uh, it's good that we you, you guys have a regular check-in on your policy check, uh, make sure it's still applicable and you can attain that to collaboration and accountability. And of course, uh, since Team Asia, in Team Asia, we have, we have a private, we value privacy on our organization. So um, um, make sure that you have uh, an element, uh, you have a privacy element on your um, uh, policy. Make sure it's a privacy first mentality. You promote that on, on your policy in terms of how, uh, how you use this AI piece. Thank you so much, Jeff. I feel like you have already given everybody a framework, right? I think that these are all very important elements to consider. Um, and I absolutely love all of them. But I'd like to share one thing that really caught my attention, which is that it has to be fair, but also easily understandable. Because Shu, earlier you mentioned the fearful will continue to to fear it, the, you know, the the doubtful will continue to doubt, but the confident people will continue to be confident with it. Um, I think that that's where the, the the fear comes, right? The understanding of it. And because it's so big and if we don't understand it, there can be the fear that goes into it. But if it is simple, direct to the point, and we see that it is a tool and that it will continuously evolve, then it changes our perspective as well. And hopefully in the future, right? Then Then we see how it will continue to grow and continue to to help us actually in, in creating the work. And speaking of the future, I think that that's the biggest question next. I mean, what does the future look like? I mean, we know that AI is continuously evolving. We know that there are a lot of different programs out there. I think Jeff mentioned earlier that there are five apps that are being developed on a daily basis or, or even more. We don't know, but that, that is the future. And I guess the question is, 
what does the future look like, right, for job opportunities or our jobs for that matter, right, with with AI being there. So I'd like to start off first with James and then I'll go around the room again. James, so to you, what does the future look like given um, AI, future of jobs? It's always such a hard question to answer, you know, when you talk about the future and given that these are emergent technologies, it's it's really hard to predict, but I guess... I guess the future would probably be dictated by how the greater population would adopt these technologies and how we will grow accustomed to imbibing these AI tools into our daily work, our daily lives, whenever it's applicable, of course, because demand for a certain type of function and feature will probably steer or um, push forward more um, more of these types of tools. For example, if it's generally being used to generate images from, from verbal prompts, then we would probably see a lot more of these types of tools, right? Or if it's used in creating 100 um, ads from, from one prompt, then it's probably going to be that way, right? So I guess uh, a very um, um, uh, sneak preview, I guess, or like a very, very, very far off preview of what the future could look like is that it would probably be shaped by how it's going to be used or how people would adopt it today. But what we can see now is that there are jobs being created um, that accommodate um, a, a greater, more purposeful use of AI in workplaces that weren't that did not exist, you know, maybe six to eight months ago. Mm -hmm. So, it these types of jobs exist now, and these jobs per pertain to, you know, being able to teach organizations how to prompt better or how to structure different AI powered tools in the workplace and how to sort of uh, sort of get everyone to adopt all of these tools. And these are very specialized types of jobs um, that did not exist before. And mm -hmm. these jobs exist now to be able to accommodate the, 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 the emergent technology, which is AI. So I guess it's start, we're starting to see that future. And um, I guess it's also the same way that when digital marketing was still new, um, you would then require, you know, the, the, the people that you want to hire to have experience with Facebook and Friendster even maybe, um, or multiply, you know, the, the older channels, right? So you would probably, I guess what I'm trying to say is it's, it's uh, whatever's in demand now would probably see more of it in the future. Uh, whether it's jobs, whether it's types of skills, or whether it's how we hire, um, I guess that's going to be how the trend will look like in the future. Thanks so much, James. It's really demand and supply, right? That that we also need to take into consideration. Shu, you mentioned earlier about the talk that you guys did and how you actually looked into education, right? How how it affects education, teachers, students, and then young professionals. So I'm also curious to to hear what your thoughts are on the future and how do we hire? How how will it change? Well, what I imagine would happen is that competencies in AI tools will start showing up in their skills. I mean, it's not just going to be new jobs coming up, but even existing jobs, for example, if you're a writer for social media, if you are an art person, and whereas before you would put there that you're good at editing and you use this tool and you have Photoshop as one of your skills, AI, the understanding of it or even like expertise if you put a um, prompt engineer for example which is one of uh one of the the, the growing um uh linked in uh titles for example if you start putting that as a competency then it becomes wait wait like this person might be ahead of the game um 
it could be one of the things that we start seeing. But again, like to me, at the end of the day, all of these skills that you put at the bottom of your of your uh, of your CV, um, and you start scaling it with seventy percent, sixty percent, eighty percent knowledge, it becomes so ubiquitous at the end of the day that it becomes a requirement for everyone. And again, yeah. what becomes important when I hire is not how good you are in Photoshop. It's not how great you are at prompting. It's not how 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 many tools you have there. But again, at the end of the day, it's going to be how you attack a brief, how quickly you come up with a creative idea. Uh, it still boils down to the creativity, which will be the reason you get hired. Uh, it's 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 good for them to have that in their pocket, because that's kind of important. It's important right now. We're gonna start seeing it in TVs. You're gonna start talking about it. But for me, a lot of these tools change and evolve. It's uh, it's very dynamic. Um, again, I love tools and I love it when I see that students are learning. You know, the world in which they're going to live in the future, that's going to be their world. They have to be equipped for it, right? Yeah. So I'm going to see that in a lot of CVs. But again, I will rely on the, on the copy test. I will rely on, on, on their portfolio. Exactly. I will rely on how they engage with me and how they answer questions and all of those other skills that make them different and that make them individual. And uh, that's probably how I I see the future. It's going to be integrated, but it's still going to be our world. And we're testing them on their humanity. <laughs> we're hiring for humanity, right? We're hiring into humanity. So thanks so much to Jeff. I'd like to check in with you. So, you know, we're seeing the different roles that are coming up, possible future of jobs. Um, again, also, how do we hire? Is it going to change? For you, how do we see human plus tech mindset? How do we instill that connection? Um well, um, <laughs> How do I answer it? Uh, well, I answer it honestly. I think um, um, we're still going to focus more on, 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 on decision making and and creativity as the most important thing, uh, uh on the human plus tech um, uh, collaboration. Um, um, it is true uh, that um, it is always advantageous on 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 knowing this um, AI um um skills and develop that but again i would like to more focus on on our dna that um we 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 love people who are who are creatives um uh, uh, a decision maker and uh, and 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 more like um use tools to eliminate all repeated repeated um, task uh mm. and to eliminate that uh a, a, a very uh, work that is um uh, um that that add a lot of stress meaning if we get and it's just parang um a repeated task and and using this ai we can we can eliminate that and so our people will be focused on more strategic uh, um thinking and and focus on decision making and and uh, planning Fantastic. Thank you so much, Jeff. Now, we are going to come to a close already, Um, uh, you know, for our podcast. Yes, it's been a, a close to an hour of already talking about our AI discovery journey. So here in B2B, um, we always ask, you know, what is our food for thought for, for the rest of the week or for the rest of the month? And uh, our directors here, our DC directors, even if they have been B2B guests before, they are not immune to this question. In fact, um, you know, we definitely want to give people more uh, food for thought because there are three guests, not just one. So I'd like to go around the table. You know, we're here. AI is here. It's here to stay and to evolve. Um, we want to embrace it instead of fighting it. If there was one thing that we want to leave our audience with, uh, for them to take away as they discover their AI journey or they create their policies and the like, what would be your food for thought? I'll start with James, Shu, and then Jeff. Go ahead, James. Um, I would say that, well, 
I guess the recurring theme of what we the, the three that all of us have been talking about tonight has been uh the fact that AI is but a tool. You know, it's it's not meant to replace people in terms of uh the work we do, especially in our industry. Um it's not something to be afraid of. It's something to um look forward to. And the more that we use it, the more that we give feedback on on how it's supposed to be used and the ethics of it all and the right or wrong ways to use it mm-hmm. and to be able to be more proactive in the conversations that surround the 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 usage of AI the more that it, it, it the more that it can evolve into something that's going to help us contribute more uh, it's uh, we're, uh, the more that we participate in conversations and the more that we use it, the more that we use AI, the more that we are informed ourselves. And the more informed we are, the more informed also our, 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 our conversations can be. And of course, the more involved, informed people in our society, the more that it can shape how developers can provide better more productive and ethically responsible AI tools that will be the next generation of AI tools. And then it will preserve the collaboration that we've all been talking about, the human and technology collaboration. And um, will preserve the human perspective in our line of work and the work that human people, uh, that people do in general. Great, thank you so much. James, it really is that AI is a tool humans matter and that we should not be afraid of it rather we can shape it how about you shu what would be your food for thought uh just a few days ago there was this ai tool that came out and became like really viral and it's it's this ai yearbook so everybody started to upload their photos and everybody started looking like jocks and like cheerleaders but you see everywhere on instagram but yesterday there was this one story uh of this this a trans girl who put her photos and it revealed that in the 90s she was a trans cheerleader and she was very bittersweet because for her that was a tumultuous time when when um she still presented as male and um and it got a lot of likes because of of the of how heartbreaking it was for her to see that that was not the person I was, that was not how I felt, but it should have been. So it's sort of a microcosm of what AI is. At the end of the day, all of us will be able to use it, right? It will be ubiquitous. We can like play around with it. But the power of the human experience and the power of the human story is what people will remember, not the tool, no? It's the human story that we will share with each other, that we will be affected by. So I think that was like, I mean, I just saw it like yesterday, I got affected by it after getting bored of seeing all of these like AI generated photos. At the end of the day, what's your story? Uh, and I think that's what's important uh, for all of us to to take from, from this. I love that, Shu. Thank you so much for sharing that. And it came to me that human story is what matters. And it's really the power of the human story and the big question of how do you want your story told, right? And and that's 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 heartwarming and also future forward, right? That we shouldn't be afraid of AI, but also see it um, as a tool to shape that to shape that future. How about you, Jeff? What would be our food for thought this week? Yeah, I I mean I would like to make it simple. Uh, rather than fight fight uh, fighting it, uh, embrace it. But if you embrace it, just make sure you have um, everyone in your organization is on the same page. You have policy that will guide them and uh, and and use it for productivity. Eliminate all repeated tasks. Make it automated using AI. And promote data privacy for that time. Jeff is our huge, biggest data privacy champion. And he said it first with our data privacy first approach, right? Embrace AI policy shape and use it for productivity and make sure also that you're safe 
in in using that. So we have three big, you know, food for thought um, this week. I'd like to chime in and actually um, sum up all of the things that uh, James, Shu, and Jeff shared. AI is a tool. It's something that we shouldn't be afraid of. It's something that is exciting. And it's something that if we continuously use it and be informed about it, we can shape the future with it. And while it is a tool, and while there are so many things happening around us when it comes to AI, we have to always remember that through it all, the power of the human story will shine through. It is what will emerge and it is what will stay and what will matter. And last but not the least, maybe let's stop fighting AI and see how we can use AI for good. So that is going to be the big food for thought for everybody. I'd like to give my super big thanks to our digital creative directors. They have been absolutely amazing. Shu, Jeff, James, thank you so much for coming to the show, for sharing your thoughts, your insights, your musings, your research, and um, also giving us hope, right? That there are different ways that, um, this is Shu's favorite line, skin the cat, and this is, you know, how we also want to do it. And it's, we want to discover AI by experimenting on it and, and using it as a tool and not being afraid of it. So again, thank you, Shu, James, and Jeff. Ladies and gents, these are our digital creative directors. They are bringing our brands and partners to the next level experience through our digital creative services that involve actually high level strategies, concepts, um, creative work, video production, tech capabilities, whether you need websites and apps, of course, or social media engagement, and really just making sure that we have visible growth, visible reach, and visible engagement with our digital strategy. So if there's anything that you'd like to know about how we can take you to the next level of experience, you have our website. It's www.teamasia.com and contact Contact us now for um, our services as well. So thank you so much, DC Directors. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. Man. All right. There you have it. Ciao, everyone. See you at the next B2B episode. That's it for today's episode of B2B Breakfast to Business with your morning girl, Bea Lim. Please don't forget to tune in to Team Asia's social media accounts to keep yourself updated on these breakfast happenings. Remember to stay safe. See you again soon here at B2B Breakfast to Business. Thank you. Ciao. Breakfast to Business.